Alrighty, folks. Hello, hello. Welcome in. Let me pop over here so y'all can see me. Hello. Uh, thank you for all the birthday wishes. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Um, for those of you who are new um, to uh, these streams, or uh, for those of you who haven't been here in a while, my name is Gudu Val, and I'm going to be your host this morning for the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge, which I am super excited about today's project. It's going to be super fun. Um, if you would like to follow along with me this morning, um, you can scroll down to the description below um, and download the assets I've prepared for you. You can download the starter file so that you can work along with me with the same files that I'm using today. And you can also join the Discord um, so that you can share your work with the community once you have finished. I'm super excited. No, I did not dress up um, for my birthday. I thought about it. I thought about it, but I did not have have enough time so unfortunately I did not but there um, will be a cosplay day uh, at the end of our two week set of challenges as usual um, but yeah without further ado let's kind of jump into what I've got planned so your starter file if you download it will look a little something like this and as I mentioned uh, during our previous challenge all of the projects for this set are going to be based off of popular pop culture TV shows um, um, and so today I am taking inspiration from the Sandman um, and we are going to be working with blur filters. We're going to be actu actually creating some custom textures and brushes and things to use the blur filters on. Um, and we are going to create a kind of swirl of motion blurred sand or grit kind of spiraling around this hourglass um, shape here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hide my info here. And one of the things I do want to do is I've kind of made this hourglass image here, um, but I do want to spice it up a little bit. We have like the hourglass, we have our background, um, which I've created for you, but I kind of want to make it a little fancier. Um, so I'm going to actually use the pen tool to kind of spice this up a little bit, but I would love to turn you folks on to what uh, one of my favorite tools recently um, and I've been talking about it a little bit but if you folks have used the pen tool and you find that it is difficult to create nice curving smooth shapes um, because sometimes the um, you know just the nature of the pen tool can be a little difficult for folks to get the hand the hang of um, I'm the same way and anytime I've tried to make smooth shapes with the pen tool I always end up with like weird edges and points where I don't want them and so if you experience that you really should be using the curvature pen tool which is what we're going to use today um, so I'm going to um, kind of have this uh, this green color sampled here since we're kind of working with black blue and green uh, in this piece and the curvature pen tool what this does if I can just start making a shape um, actually I'm gonna do I'm gonna do um, just like the regular pen tool here for a second um, and just kind of show you like what I was running into was this problem where I would start to create um, round shapes um, and that was all well and good until I started doing like this portion where it was hard for me to kind of line up um, my my curving if that makes sense you know I just I just wasn't quite getting it right um, and it works a little bit but once I start really trying to create um, all of this, it doesn't really, like, I have, like, these strange breaks, like how this point comes down here, and I got the hang of it a little bit, but it was a little meh for me, um, and so using the curvature pen tool, um, if I just right-click here, uh, on my pen tool, you can kind of select from these other pen tool, uh, features here, go to curvature pen tool, the curvature pen tool actually, um, just, I'm just tapping here, I'm just tapping, um, and it creates these really nice curving pieces for you. Um, and I'm not actually uh, bending it in any way. And it just really smoothens that curve from point to point um, as, as you need. Um, and so I really love this. Um, it is one of my favorite things to use. And we're going to use that to add a little bit of spice um, to our hourglass here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring... Um, this around here uh, and just kind of do like a, a straight line there and then I'm going to kind of come around and start to curve 
uh, this around like so, just to add a top portion of sand um, to this. And then I will right click that and create a clipping mask out of it so that as you can see here, it just kind of clips that right there. I might actually rotate this just a little bit to kind of, um, yeah, I think that's gonna be good. Um, it could be pertinent to alter some of these here just to make it slightly less dramatic. It doesn't have to be so crazy. Um, and I guess you would get points after you start altering things, um, but this is like after I have edited it um, and it's not, uh, it's not really, um, I don't think that's the same because you know, it with you, you, if you get points with your curvature pen tool or I, I guess pointier, sections um, after you edit it, it's not the same as placing it down and starting with these issues that you then have to smooth out. Um, so uh, I think that looks pretty good. Um, I could actually remove um, some of these points if I wanted to um, and just kind of, let me kind of bring these down. Oh, maybe I didn't want to change that. I think I'm just going to move some of these down um, just because I would like to make this a little bit smoother. I think that'll work for me. Um, okay. And then I might also kind of bring this down and around just to kind of curve that. And then I think I'll free transform. Uh, let me make sure that I am not selected on it um, and just kind of make that, uh, if I can, there we go. Just bring it down and then bump it up. That'll work for me. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be too precious with it. Um, then I'm going to select a darker color, maybe this one that I already have kind of selected in there. And in between the hourglass and that, what I'm gonna do is I am just going to start to create um, like this, you know, kind of, I guess, shape that suggests that the sand is pouring out. That's what I want to do. Um, and I think that will kind of give us a nice shape here. Uh, and then I will kind of do what I did before and edit it as I go along. Um, and I think that looks good. I will kind of bend those outward. I'll bend this one in. We'll bring that up. Um, we can bring this down just to kind of start building this pouring sort of feel. Um, and that actually doesn't look too bad. I might not mess with it too much just because it, it, it works for me um, and we are limited on time. So I will go ahead and I want to make sure that that is a darker color. Um, make sure that is between those shapes like so. Uh, maybe bring that in just a little bit. Um, and then uh, you can see that we're starting to get like this nice, um, interesting shape here. Um, and just to top it off, I will use actually the, um, we're gonna rasterize these, rasterize these layers. Um, and since they are clipping masks already, um, I try to say this as often as I can whenever I'm using clipping masks. If you would like to clip something to a layer, but it's already a clipping mask, you could just use the transparency, lock transparency button, which is like this little checkerboard. And I will grab my handy dandy, um, uh, soft round brush, which is available to you in Photoshop, turn it on dissolve. And then with my mouse, um, and another, uh, color selected, maybe a darker color here. I'm just going to come in and I oops, wrong layer. I just want to come in and tap it. This should be set on lock transparency. There we go. Um, I'm just going to come in and tap it just to kind of make it look make it look fancy, you know, add a little, little bit of oomph to it before we start to swirl our, um, our blurred texture, our blurred grit around it, you know? Um, I think one of the things to keep in mind uh, for this is that what I'm really trying to do with this challenge is solve a problem that I personally have run into many, many times. So if you've ever tried to add a blur um, to something, uh, to kind of, I don't know, either give a, give a painting a little bit of atmosphere, um, or to, um, 
add kind of an interesting effect to a graphic. Um, what I was doing, and maybe you did this too, was I was just using motion blur and blurring pieces of that graphic um, in different directions over and over again. And it's really uh, not the move. Um, and what I did for a long time uh, in doing that was create tons and tons of extra work for myself in a way that it just was not necessary. Um, and it actually never looked quite as clean and smooth as I really wanted it to look. Um, and so I will show you um, how I solved that problem now. Um, so the first thing that you will want is to create um, yourself a texture to use. Um, we are going to be um, trying to simulate like a sand texture of sorts. Um, and so we need to kind of create a um, a texture to paint in or to blend in, uh, which will work. So what I'm going to do is group all of my pieces here and um, call this main, just so that I know that's my main piece. Um, and with a brush, which I'm going to use, um, I guess we could use like a hard round pressure, uh, which is also included um, with Photoshop uh, if you have never customized your brushes. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create myself like a gritty texture of sorts. Um, and I'm going to do it like by just placing in some dots and things. Something like this, I think. Um, like so. This is going to be our grit and we're just going to customize it a little bit. Um, also, I'm going to peek in the chat real quick. The swirl. Um, try swirling. That's a good way. Maybe scale the sound down a bit for the thickness of, of the glass. Yeah, you know, I thought about that, but it's kind of a graphical element rather than a realistic um, element. Um, so I think I'm not going to be too precious about it and worry about it um, for the purpose of this challenge because we have um, maybe 10 to 12 minutes left. Um, and I feel like if you guys want me to make this hourglass realistic, I can do that, but it is going to take me 45 minutes. <laughs> so um, I'm just erasing portions from this to make this look like uh, specks of dust, uh, little pieces of grit um, and, and things like that, um, because we are going to kind of randomize this into uh, a, a swirling texture, give it a little bit of body, give it a little bit of motion. Um, and we're also going to create a custom asset with it, um, a brush, uh, in fact. And um, so we kind of need a, a good base starting texture to work with. And I guess you could also, you could also, um, I guess, paint by hand. If you wanted to go in and paint a bunch of grit like this by hand um, into your piece to use the motion blur on, you could. But trust me, um, after... A decade of doing everything the hard way when it comes to illustrating or designing graphically, um, creating a brush or an asset that you can quickly lay textures in um, is th really the best way to go. Um, it saves a lot of time and then it gives you the opportunity to spend time on the design and the um, composition of your piece rather than these tiny little portions um, that uh, just kind of waste your time. So I am, I've got this, uh, this piece here and that works for me. So I'm going to go ahead and hide this um, and I'm going to, um, with this layer selected, I'm going to control or command if you're using a Mac, U. Um, because that's going to bring up my hue and saturation. And I'm just going to bump that lightness down to dark to turn it black. Um, and then I'm going to, with my lasso tool, which you can access by pressing L on your keyboard, I am just going to kind of select around this. Now I am using my stylus, um, but I, I don't think that the selection matters too much. It doesn't have to be perfect here. Um, you just need to get around the shape of your, uh, of your brush here. And with that selected, I'm going to come up here and go to edit and then define brush preset. So this is going to create, you can see that little thumbnail has created um, a, a brush out of that shape, which we just um, created. And I'm going to call this, uh, uh, I like to give my custom brushes like titles and not just names. Um, so I'm going to call this the grit monster monster 
that's what we're that's what we're gonna call it the grit monster okay uh we're gonna say okay and then i'm gonna go ahead and hide this uh control or command d to deselect and bring out my main piece again and then we're gonna look in our brushes panel um, and see what we have created uh, so control or command shift in to create a new layer real quick um, and i'll right click and you can see the grit monster is here um, and I'm going to bump this up and throw this into um, my my main brushes, which are at the top um, that I use. You can see some of the tests that I've done here as well. Um, maybe give you a little preview of kind of how we're going to be working with this today. Um, and you can see that if I start painting, let me make sure caps lock is off. Another tip, um, if you ever use your brush and all you get is this little um, plus sign cursor, um, it's because caps lock is on and if you turn off caps lock you will again see the shape of the brush you're using now this is actually kind of a cool brush um, but it's not what we're looking for so what we're going to do is up here at the top there's a little brush um, with a folder um, beside it uh, or a brush on top of a folder if you click that it will open up your brush settings um, and with your uh, brush settings open you can come in and really start to customize um, this brush so the first thing we're going to do because we're creating sand and grit is we're going to fix that spacing so we're going to space that out and what I want to do is not space it out so they look like separate little entities in and of themselves just like that I want to kind of still have the tail end of them connected so it all looks like one um, continuous piece and you can see how that does there um, and the next thing I want to do is come into shape dynamics so size jitter would be great so we have like some different sizes in there. Sometimes they're small, sometimes they're large, just to get a, a nice variation, which is starting to look a little bit like we want. Uh, minimum diameter. I kind of want the minimum diameter on. I'd like it to taper off at the end, um, just for my particular style of how I'm going to do this sand. That would be great. Um, the angle jitter, we can kind of arrange them differently. So you can see now they're starting to come in at different uh uh, different orientations, which is really cool. Um, and then we can come over to scattering. You could scatter it a little bit um, if you wanted to. I think what I want to do though is an angle jitter. I think I want to do uh, direction um, because that will mean that it will start to place them in the direction that I am moving my stylus or my pen uh, or my mouse, excuse me. Um, and that works for me. I think that's really cool. We might add a tiny bit more scattering. Um, and bump the count up um, so that you can see that adds more there. So this is starting to be very gritty. Um, uh, you might want to space out a tiny bit more if you think that that's right for you and uh, maybe up the count. Uh, you could do something like that just so that it's more spaced out. Um, I think that I'll keep the count down and the scattering down and um, bump the spacing back closer together though because this uh, works for me. Now, uh, the next thing we are going to do is make sure we save this because if you switch to another brush, you will lose all this stuff that you've done. So I'm going to go new brush preset and we're going to call this the Grit Monster um, Extra. Boom. Um, and then I think we have about six or seven minutes here, which is perfect. Um, so then what we're going to do now that we have the grit monster extra, um, selected is we are going to, I'm going to double check and make sure, yeah, this is at the bottom. So I want to make sure I drag this up. I've got so many thousands of brushes in here that I just need to make sure that whatever brushes I'm using are, um, at the top where I can see them. So we got the grit monster extra, uh, up here. And now we can come in and we can place in some grit. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer. Uh, and I'm going to call this layer grit. Boom. Um, and what we can do, what I'm thinking I want to do, is do some kind of swirl around this. So if I want to do something like this, you know, like kind of an S-curve. But I do have, oh, you know what? We need pen pressure on this. Um, fail to load. Hmm. Odd. Uh, we need pen pressure on this. So let me come in here to shape dynamics. Um, and I'm going to type in pen pressure. Yeah, there we go. So it kind of tapers off at the end. And then if I press harder, it's larger. This is great. Um, well, so we'll save one more. Um, we're going to call this, uh, new brush preset. We're going to call this the grit monster pointy. <laughs> 
because it's pointy. Um, and then we'll make sure that this is up here with the rest of our brushes. Um, so we're going to, with that pen pressure um, now set, uh, we can kind of create a more dynamic um, kind of blend of this. Yeah, something like that. Um, we could even turn, I guess smoothing is up uh, high already. So if I want to press lightly and then press hard as it comes into the front, let me see if I can kind of maneuver this. It might take me a few times to get something that I like. Uh, I would be embarrassed that I can't do this the first time, but I think if I showed you guys uh, doing it perfect the first time, that would be really disingenuous because this is something that happens a lot. Also, I wanna actually, you know what I'm doing? I'm gonna make the brush larger. Ooh, too large. Um, and I'm also gonna stop trying to paint around it uh, because we can use a layer mask for what I'd like to do. I think maybe we'll just do one instead of me trying to do this really dramatic, lovely snake. And I'll also stop trying to do it all in one go. Maybe that'll work. Uh, I'm gonna give it one more go. We're gonna do this. We're gonna go with this. And I'm gonna paint more in it instead of, like I said, trying to do it all in one go. We'll add some grit just like that. Um, I wish that my hand made a perfect stroke, but you know, sometimes this is what you end up with. Um, okay, hopefully you folks can use your imaginations. Imagine that it's excellent um, and we will move on um, with this. Okay, so uh, say this is the final version of my little uh, flourish of sand that I'd like to use. Now what I was doing um, back in the day is sectioning this out into different portions that would um, be motion blurred. So if I go up here to um, filter blur and then go to um, our blurs here, I was using motion blur. But what you can do is use um, a blur gallery and go to path blur. And this is fabulous. So I want this to blur as if it's moving in its own S-curve um, uh, uh, path. And so all I have to do is I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna start blurring this on a path. Boom. And I'm gonna call that done. Look at that. So now it's kind of followed the path of what I'm doing here, which I think is awesome. And I can come in and, and edit that if I want to pull that up higher. Um, I'm not going to mess with it too much because I think that's a pretty, pretty darn good blur. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. You can see it'll think for a second and then it will apply um, our lovely blur for us um, all according to whatever path I've put on there, um, which is fabulous. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my main here um, and I'm going to control or command click the shape of my hourglass like so. And I'm going to remove what I think um, should be behind. So I'll hit L on my keyboard to access my, um, my lasso. And then on our grit layer here, what I'm going to do is I am going to subtract from this top here like so, actually, yeah, I'm gonna subtract from the top here. Um, and what I'm gonna do is right click and select inverse so that I'm selecting all of the area except this bottom portion here. And I'm gonna hit our mask button. Um, and that's just gonna put that right behind. And then something that you might enjoy doing is maybe trying another variation of your brush to add um, some little gritty textures around. So if I just tap, I wonder if that'll, if that'll do it. If I just tap um, and start kind of adding little grit portions every once in a while, um, which could be cool. So there's like some stuff that is focused and some stuff that is not. Then I could come in, um, maybe I'll mask this one too. Um, I'll come in with a brush. Let's just grab like this soft round. Make sure that that is on black. 
Um, and then I can come in and just kind of start to uh, blend out, remove some of our little pieces of grit, just because I think it looks cool if you supplement your motion, oops, 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 if you supplement your motion blurred um, uh, piece with like particles that are in focus. Um, I, let me make sure, let's see how much time we have. Oh, we are time to go. Um, thank you so much for joining me folks. Um, I am going to be here tomorrow morning for another challenge, but I do have to take off now. It has been an absolute pleasure and I will see you tomorrow. Adios everyone.